Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about number problems, which is a category of measurement and data. In particular, we're going to be looking at the topic called determining unknowns in this video. Now, to start off with, let's begin by reading a short description of what determining unknown questions can be involve. So determining unknowns is similar to algebra, but without symbols or letters. Number problems require you to transform the, the question into a numerical sentence in order to solve it. Drawing a diagram may help in some questions if one is not already provided. Graphs are also often found in these questions. We need to have a good understanding of graph and table reading as well as bond mass as they need to work with both sides of an equation and should also be mindful of units. So from what we've just read, we can basically tell that number problems or determining unknown questions have a lot of variety. They can span a variety of different topics, uh, different concepts. So reading the question and understanding what it actually wants from us is going to be the biggest key point to answering these types of questions. Obviously, we can't point out every single strategy because of the the um, variety present in these types of questions, but the approach is generally the same uh, regardless of e the question type. We first read the question, we pick out the important relevant parts of the information and jot it down in a way that we, we can quickly refer back to it um, with efficiency. And one way to do that may often be through the form of a diagram. Representing the information in a different manner, such as in a numerical sentence, may also help as well. Because at the end of the day, these questions are going to be basically very similar to logic puzzles. That's why they say it's going to be similar to algebra, but without the symbols or letters. Algebra questions are basically solving puzzles, but using symbols or letters to represent different numbers. And in this scenario, since we don't have those symbols or letters, you're left with the puzzle part of the question. So these questions also tend to be kind of wordy. So translating them into more useful um, formats, such as the number sentence or the diagram is going to be very, very helpful. In the case that you're presented with a graph or a table, it's always very important to glean as much information as you can from the, the graph or table before actually proceeding with the question. For example, graphs have a lot of information in the title, the subtitles, the axis um, headings, any information in the axes as well, the spacings of the axes, things like that can all like provide you vital information that you might miss if you rush forward with the question. Things like tables, read the headings very closely, read what is given to you and what isn't. And all of that should become much easier with some practice. As always, with all mathematical questions, always adhere to the bod mass rules. So that is um, in any number sentence, complete the brackets first, then any orders, which include things like roots or indices. Then you can do your division and multiplication. And finally, you can do your addition and subtraction. Adding on to that is the fact that we always, always need to pay attention to units. If the question uses multiple different units, then we know that we need to convert them into the same one to proceed with the maths involved. So that would be kind of the general overview. And unfortunately, it is quite general because of the variety present in the question. So let's see if we can consolidate our knowledge into a more solid one with this example question. Here we see that we have a garden and I'm planting seedlings in rows and columns. There is an equal number of seedlings in each row and an equal number of seedlings in each column. One plant unfortunately dies. It is the third from the front and the second from the back. There are three plants to the left of it and two plants to the right of it. The question wants us to figure out how many seedlings did we plant. 
Okay, so like we discussed in the description, we can see that there are quite a lot of words in this question. There aren't really any algebraic letters or symbols, but there are numbers involved and there are more to do with the number concept rather than doing complex calculations. In this case, we're looking at something where we planted what seems to be in a kind of like a rectangular seedling plant garden and we want to figure out the number of seedlings. So the first step with these very difficult or wordy questions would always be to reinterpret what the question actually wants from us. And we can see the question wants us to figure out what is the, the placement of these seedlings. And we can see that a diagram would be incredibly helpful in this scenario. A number sentence wouldn't work as well since there's no actual uh, numbers involved. So let's stick with the diagram. Let's, we don't know where this dead plant is. So I'm going to put a X um, in the center of my drawing space to represent the dead seedling. Now, re now, we can then regard the rest of the instructions in regards to the dead plant. So it says it is third from the front. So let's assume that this is the front, this is the back. If my pen would like to continue writing and we have its left and we have its right. Now that we've got our bearings correct, let's uh, add in the information. We're told this is actually third from the front. So we've got a first and second place in front of the plant. And we also told that it's actually second from the back. So there must be one more plant um, be behind it. Then we're going to use the same approach for the other two directions. I told there are three plants to the left of it. So let's include those. One, two, three. And we're told that there are two plants to the right of it. One, two. So how do we figure out how many seedlings did we plant? Well, this information basically tells us the dimensions of the plant garden that we plant the seedlings in. We've got essentially one, two, three, four plants, uh, four rows. And uh, let's draw it out. One, two, three, four rows. And in the same way, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So since we know that, we can then very easily figure out that the number of seedlings is just going to equal 24 seedlings. And the fact that the question says that there were an equal number of seedlings in each row and column means that each, each space, I suppose, had the same number of seedlings, which we can assume to be just one. So that's going to be the answer to the question. It's going to be answer option B. Okay, so we saw how important it was to draw up a diagram for this question and how important it was to digest the very wordy question into a format that was much more recognizable and easier to understand. So those would be the major kind of techniques that you should employ for these types of questions. Hopefully this video ends up being of some help to you in the future.